Guten Tag, mein Freund. It's, uh, it's Thursday, and uh, I'm on my way, actually, to the other side of town to do some business, personal business, that is. And uh, now that I'm not the owner of the business anymore, I, uh, oh, did I not mention that? Sorry. Update. Uh, I sold my business, not because it was doing poorly, but because it was uh, doing so well, I wanted to uh, have more time with my family, and I didn't want to hire anyone to do what I do because in my industry, nobody that I trust can do what I do, so... Uh, decided to sell it and I'll train uh, the new owners uh, guys and the new owner on what I've been doing uh, some of the stuff they won't be able to do uh, but I'll still be there he took me on as an employee and uh, I'll be uh, there for however long I'm there for and uh, that's always cool I have a job and I've got passive income coming in from the sale of the business which is good so all is still well in uh, in Duncan town so we're all good on to the video now I'm headed to the other side of town to go to the bank and uh, do some business and I generally don't have a chance to do that until Thursday or Friday because busy so I uh, go in a little later on Thursday and Friday and I don't work Saturday so it's kind of my only time to do stuff so pick the kids up dropped them off and now I'm on to do stuff so what I actually wanted to talk to you about is uh, orthodoxy orthodoxy in the in Christianity Verse or um, e evangelicalism, if that's a word. Uh, evangelical, Protestant, Pentecostal style religion. And as a person who's grown up in church all of my life, and the son of a pastor, and I've done everything there is that you can do except for, I guess, be a missionary. I don't think I've been a missionary yet. Um, as far as, you know, the everyday duties go, I've preached, uh, I've done a wedding, I have not done a funeral. Um, I've helped with uh, baptism, salvations, baptisms in the Holy Spirit, healings, deliverances, uh, Bible studies, discipleship, cleaning the toilets, working in the kids' church, changing diapers, cleaning the church, uh, mowing the lawn. There's a lot of things that don't involve being behind a pulpit that still have to happen in order for a church to operate cleanly and successfully and so the uh, the word religion when I talk about it I mean religion as in uh, I, I use that word actually in a negative connotation because the word religion to me I think about it in the way that other people think about it as a list of do's and don'ts more don'ts than do's and everything that you have to give up and nothing that you get and so when I say religion I don't mean it as like a denomination I mean it as an actual like you know structured kind of negative way uh, being put in a box but that was never if you've never heard this then I'm glad you're hearing it for the first time but 
the whole thing of when Christians talk about having a relationship with Jesus or knowing Jesus or having a relationship with God, what we're actually meaning, what we should actually mean is like you having a relationship with your best friend or, or a great relationship with uh, a mother or father. I'm not saying that God's a woman. I'm just saying that that relationship that total trust, that total, de not really dependency, but in a sense that they're going to take care of you, but the dependency that they're there whenever you need them, and that they love you no matter what, and that, you know, that's the relationship I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a, uh, I'm a lowly worm, I'm just a servant, I'm no good, I don't deserve anything because I'm an evil corrupt human being it it does not work that way in the kingdom of God it works that way in other places or in religion but Jesus never came to set up a religion he actually came to tear it down because it was corrupt and what he was trying to do is to restore the relationship between God and man and Jesus was the point of contact, if you would. So he came as God in the flesh to do business on God's behalf for us and set things straight. So the, uh, the Catholic Church split with the Orthodox Church. The Orthodox Church was started by converted Jews and Gentiles who were doing things as Jesus said they were to be done or how uh, the Spirit of God was telling them to do it. And they've been doing it that way for over 2,000 years. There's no fads. There's no uh, fancy worship. As far as we know it, with smoke and mirrors and lasers and uh, holograms and you know, uh, unbuttoned shirts and beanie caps and uh, ethereal voices and adding an accent to your song that you don't normally talk with or, you know, this unscriptural garbage uh, like Joffrey the Giant was talking about a few videos back about Jesus is my boyfriend love songs in church. Yes, I am in love with Jesus, not on a homosexual level, but in an instance where, let's say, you were going to die, someone was going to kill you, and they told you that you had to do something in order for them not to kill you that was impossible for you to do, but someone else did it for you on your behalf and that person was your best friend. So they, you know, sacrificed themselves for you, that kind of thing. Not like a, I want Jesus to make a baby inside of me kind of way, that the weird stuff that's starting to come out. So um, I have been always raised, I was, I've always been in a Pentecostal church or a, a Protestant evangelical church that believed in the gifts of the spirit. And none of them were ever showy. None of them were ever uh, out of order or chaotic, as it says in 1 Corinthians. They were done in order and respect for the service. There were some times where some stuff did get kind of weird, but, you know, 99.999% of the time, everything was, you know, in order. But I've been used to the emotional aspect of worship where you're singing, you're, you're pouring out your heart to a, a, an entity or a being that you cannot see with your eyes. You cannot wrap your head around logically why it would make sense that something more powerful than yourself way out in the middle of who knows where would care about you and want to do anything for you but yet did everything for you. Uh, you just have to discover it and have that relationship with this deity or this entity or spirit or power. 
Um, so I grew up, you know, uh, if you're singing a song and you feel yourself getting emotional, uh, we would refer to that as a move of the spirit where the presence of the Lord has come into the room. You get the goosebumps kind of thing. And then, you know, it would go on from there. Sometimes there would be uh, gifts of the Spirit in operation or whatever the case was uh, that was going on at the time. So uh, that's what I grew up in, is, is the Pentecostal church, specifically the Church of God. And uh, this uh, idea of, well, I've dabbled in the assemblies of God here and there, but they're not much different than the Church of God <clears throat> as far as beliefs go. Holiness, sanctification, love, Holy Spirit, that kind of, you know, the general gist of things, stay away from bad stuff, um, whatever. So, when somebody came to me and they said, hey, what about orthodoxy? Have you thought about orthodoxy? thought, no, never. Why would I even think about orthodoxy? That's not in my wheelhouse. That's, that's the other side of the world. You know, Greek Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, Antiochian Orthodox. No. And not in a rude way, but it's just like, no, I've never thought of it because they don't do what I do. I don't know what they do, so of course we fear things we don't know about. But as with any uh, intelligent person or any person who uh, is gracious, they will listen to the other person, hear them out, and then, excuse me, give them, uh, give them time to explain. So I did. Uh, and I, I've gone on this walk with my friend of orthodoxy, seeing the merits, uh, the pros, uh, I guess the cons, if you want to call it cons, uh, of orthodoxy. And now I am not perplexed, but I am I'm met by the choice of orthodoxy as a new um, a new journey or a new lifestyle but coming out of a an evangelical background or a, a Pentecostal background there are a lot of things with orthodoxy that seem extremely strange to us Protestants that may be a lot easier for some Catholics or Anglicans uh, to swallow you know, from the liturgical background where you have uh, masks, you have feasts, you have divine liturgy, you have icons or relics uh, that you uh, you honor and respect. You, uh, I don't. You give honor to as if that person was actually alive, and that is I can, you know, you can tell I'm having a problem with that because it's weird to venerate a picture. Now, I understand the way that it's been explained to me. It would be as if you were off at war, you have a picture of your wife or kids uh, or girlfriend in your helmet or in your boot, and you would say, oh, I miss you so much, I love you, and then you go on. Well, that's kind of the same thing as I understand about venerating a relic uh, or venerating a icon, uh, the paintings of the saints, is that you, you are saying, I honor and respect you for who you are and what you did, and uh, I, I love you. Well, I don't have that kind of relationship with that person. I don't love St. Paul. I don't love St. Peter. I don't love, you know, uh, St. Bartholomew, St. Nicholas, all those dudes. I think they're great guys. But love in the sense that I'm talking is the love that I have for my Savior, Jesus. Now, 
venerating an, an icon of Jesus, I I don't have a problem with as much as I do with venerating an icon of another saint. Uh, because if I want to tell the Lord that I love him, I will simply say, Lord, I love you. And I can close my eyes if I want. I can keep my eyes open if I want. I can look up at the sky if I want. You know, I can say it inside without any words, vocally if I want. And I know that he hears me. Because it says in the Bible, he hears us when we pray. And praying is nothing more than having a conversation with someone. And it's making your requests or making your petitions known to another person. So prayer for me is not give me, give me, give me, my name is Jimmy. Prayer to me is having a very natural conversation with the Lord. You know, I would say, Lord, I have really screwed up. Or Lord, I thank you for giving me strength. You know, it's not father this, father that. And, and father, father, I just thank you, father, like you're forgetting who you're talking to. So Christianity has been made this really weird uh, act of things that should just be so natural as if the person is next to you. And of course, you uh, should hear back from the Father or the Lord one way or the other. You may just feel a gentle peace in your heart or in your spirit about what you have prayed about. You may feel a, a release of tension or pressure or <coughs> guilt and shame. Uh, you know, that kind of thing when you pray. There, whatever the prayer is, prayer can be all sorts of things. It can be thanksgiving. It can be remorseful and sorrowful. It can be a repentant prayer. But, it, you know, it's just talking to the Lord. It's, it should not be difficult. Children pray all the time, and it's no problem for them. It's when we put our adult twist and spin on it that it makes it difficult, and it shouldn't be. So, with the kissing the icon, venerating the icon, you know, that, that I have a problem with. I don't have a problem with honoring the mother of Jesus, Mary, the blessed Theotokos. I do not have a problem with that. I think that she, like Father George said was like a New Testament Ark of the Covenant because she carried the Lord Jesus, a.k.a. the Spirit of God. Which, if you never thought about that, that's freaking awesome. Who else has done that? Uh, nobody. So yeah, she's a blessed woman. It even says several times, she's blessed. She's blessed among uh, women. Or, you know, her bosom is super awesome because of Jesus and that kind of stuff. So, I have no problem giving honor to the Mother Mary. I don't pray to the Mother Mary. Mother Mary bore Jesus, had him, she did her job. She is not involved to me. She's not involved in my salvation process. That was all the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says, no man come to the Father except through Jesus. Jesus said that on many occasions, that if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. And if you have heard me, you have heard the Father, because I don't do or say anything that my Father doesn't say or do. So, many times in the Bible, it talked about Jesus being the living word, which meaning the Bible. Every scripture that was in the Old Testament, he fulfilled. Everything he said was scriptural. So, he was the word in life. So, I don't have any problem saying that Mary is a blessed woman, that she should be honored for her obedience and willingness to be holy and pure and to accept the Spirit of God upon her and birth of Jesus into this world. Orthodox says Mary is involved in the salvation process because she carried Jesus and that she is now, because of her giving birth, is involved in salvation. Kind of? But that's like 
I don't, you know, for me, that it, again, that's hard. Coming out of a Protestant Pentecostal evangelical background, that's not words that we're used to, to hearing or saying. You know, it, it's like some places it's Jesus all the way. Some places it's God all the way. Some places it's Jesus and God. And then other places it's Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Well, Orthodox believes in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but they have other things that they believe in too. And coming out of a a non-liturgical background is difficult for me. But then again, I met with the choice of the traditional church versus the new church. Because if you give it a little more thought, the Catholic church split from the Orthodox church because the Pope at the time decided, you know what, instead of being a bishop among bishops, I am the vicar of God and everyone else needs to bow down to me. That I specifically hold the keys uh, that were entrusted to me by the Lord and that nobody else is as good as me. To where the Orthodox was like, whoa, 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 Brosif, you're a bishop among bishops. We are all just as good or just as bad as the next guy. You are no better than us. And he was like, you're going to bow down or get on with it. And they're like, you're out of line, dude. So the Catholic Church started off in a pretty poor way, coming from my point of view, looking at history. So they moved over to Constantinople and lived in Byzantium, which is Byzantine era, Byzantine time, Byzantine, you know, empire kind of deal. It's going great for a while. So... Uh, when I met with all of this, you think, okay, well, Martin Luther came out of the Catholic Church, and Martin Luther had a problem with what was going on with the Catholic Church. Uh, the, the money that was being given to release you of your sins, to shorten your time in purgatory, you know, that kind of scam, robbery that was going on. So he said, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. Here's my thesis. Here's some more papers. I'm out. Chuck deuces. I'll catch you on the flip. Don't let the door hit you where the Lord split you. And then he made a choice. Okay, we're going to do it this way now. Protestant. So then you have people in the Protestant church saying, oh, no, dude, you're doing that wrong. You need to do it like us. They're like, no, you need to get with the program. It's like this. So there's just been a split, constant division from the Catholic Church through the Protestant Church and the Protestants, the Lutheran, the Presbyterian, the Pentecostal, the Assemblies of God, the Church of God, the Church of God in Christ, the you know, Jehovah's Witness, the all these dudes, the whoever, the first church, the second church, Methodist Church, the first Methodist Church, the United Methodist Church, the first United Methodist Church, and all these other, you know, churches that you can think of that aren't Catholic or Protestant. But they're all splitting from each other. There's no unity in any of that. You look at the Orthodox Church, there's still unity after two thousand years. There hasn't been a split. Now, there's been evangelical orthodox where people like myself have been like, you know what? We need to get back to the roots, but we don't want to give up the move of the Spirit. And uh, my brother gave me a book called, uh, was it My Journey into Orthodoxy? Uh, written by Peter Gilchrist, I think is what his name was. I could be wrong on the last name. Uh, but he used to do Campus Crusades for Christ back in the 70s. And him and a bunch of other dudes that were doing that, um, like he was one of the top dudes. You know, he was baptizing, baptizing people in the water fountains at UC Berkeley. You know, there was dudes living up in communes with the hippies in the Northwest. And they started looking at things and they're like, we think we're missing something. So they started looking into the New Testament and into the scrolls and scriptures. And they realized, oh... Well, this stuff is all orthodox stuff. We're not trying to be orthodox. We're just trying to get back to the origins. So now my wife and I, we're like, okay, we don't get it. 
we don't understand some of the things you do. And we're not saying that Pentecostal is wrong. We're not saying that Foursquare is wrong. We're not saying that Assemblies of God is wrong. We're just saying that there is Orthodox, there is Catholic, there is Protestant, and there's all these other things that you could go with. But what we're looking at is, is, is our journey, the journey to be made into Orthodox. You know, and I think it's going to take quite a bit of time for us to actually get our head around uh, how they do Eucharist, how they believe in Eucharist. You have to be a member. It's a closed communion. It is not an open communion. In the Protestant church, a lot of the churches that we've ever been in, it's an open communion. If you are uh, a Christian, if you actually walk and talk the Bible, not meaning that you're a Bible thumper, but if you're a person who uh, is more Christian than you are a sinner, meaning you're not making a practice out of sin, that you have asked forgiveness for the Lord, you have accepted His gift of salvation, and you have repented from your ways and you're trying your best and you're realizing that he is the only way that you're going to make it, not in your own strength or your ability, but in his gift to you, then you take communion. Uh, you don't like if you're visiting another church and it's communion day there, then you can take communion. You don't have to be a member there. But in Orthodox, you have to be Orthodox in order to take communion that for us is strange and they you know there's just different beliefs that we're going to have to work through or work with to see if it's going to be something that we are able to agree with and say yes we believe this we believe this is the truth and then go from there so that is kind of the it's not even a dilemma it's just a choice it's just you know standing in a road that goes left one way or you continue on your way the way you're going. And, uh, you know, it's not saying that if you're a Pentecostal, you're not going to go to heaven. Or if you're not Orthodox, you're not going to go to heaven. You know, we're both going after the same Lord and Savior. You know, he is the captain of the ship. He is the head of the church. So whether you're Orthodox or you're Pentecostal or Presbyterian or Methodist or Lutheran or whatever... As long as Jesus is the focal point of your life and you're letting him lead you and you're actually obeying and you are uh, counting on him to get you there instead of your works to get you there, then that's really the point. It's not, you know, what group am I going to be involved in? What box am I going to hop in to try and get there? So that's, that's kind of the thing right now is uh, trying to discover more about orthodoxy and uh, and why it, there seems to be this shift starting to happen from people like myself who have been in uh, spirit-led uh, churches, Pentecostal, uh, Protestant, evangelical churches, to now make the move to orthodoxy. And, and what what is causing them to be drawn that direction? Is it because that the the modern day church that we have is really um, not jacked up, but it's got so fluffy that there's no strength. And it's got too show driven and not participation uh, oriented it's more spectator oriented and that people are just really sick of that stuff and you just want to get back you know throw all the lights away throw the fog machine away stop screwing around with dry ice get rid of all of the the show the distractions put the crosses back in the church take communion every Sunday you know, have more reverence for the Lord and for the house of God. Is it people that have gotten sick of all the show and the lights and the glitz and the glamour that have been brought into Christianity to make it better and hipper and for today? 
and we've gotten away from the scriptures and we just want to say something that sounds cool that sounds like it tickles our ear or do we want to try and swallow something that is a horse pill the size of your leg to say you know what I am really jacked up and I need to change I see the problem and I repent Lord help me you don't want to hear that we want to have somebody stroke our head you know soft kitty little ball of fur purr 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 you don't want to hear something you know negative from the pulpit that'll make you feel bad that might hurt your feelings well guess what if your feelings don't get hurt you might stand in front of a train and get hit you don't want to hear me yell at you get out of the way but guess what I'm gonna yell at you because I love you get out of the way you know sometimes stuff is uncomfortable but it doesn't have to be but we need to be corrected and we can't get offended when that happens so are people changing to orthodoxy because they're tired of the fluff and stuff or is it because it's just something that's new that's come around that's presented itself as a different way that's kind of where we're at so i'm here at the bank time to do some business and then go to work see you guys later Hope you have a great day. We'll see you again soon. Bye.